Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a malware developed by the Russian group APT29. It's called Hamatos, and it's something we would really like to know if you are developing malwares for the first time. It will give you a sense of what you should target to make. Before we discuss Hamatos in detail, let us discuss some basics of malware operation. Hammer toss is something we call a CNC architecture. CNC stands for command and control. The red teamers in a CNC architecture usually control the malware from a centrally located server and they have implants which are distributed over to the client sites which are compromised machines and the red teamers interact with these implants to extract information or execute payloads on these compromised machines. You must understand that the primary challenge here is not to compromise the machine. That is not the aim of this malware. The primary challenge is to evade security systems that are in place to detect suspicious behavior. Network defenders, antiviruses, which are on the lookout for files which are malicious. And Hamatos perhaps provides a very smooth and easy architecture for you to understand. While doing all of this and proving to be a great malware. So it's worth knowing about it. So what's APT29? APT29 is a name given by FireEye Inc. to a Russian hacker group which stands for Advanced Persistent Threat Group 29. It's a group known by several names across the internet. I'll put links in the description if you want to read more about the group. And this group is thought to be backed by the Russian government. This has been in a part in many uh, very famous security breaches and attacks in the past. And this group is known for using very new types of custom malware for their attacks, architectures which are unique in design and are, are very, very tough to uh, analyze for several malware analysts. So why should we know about Hamatos? Well, it's a malware you should know if you are new to the field of malware design or even if you are someone who has been doing this for a long time now. Probably you have designed malwares in several traditional te techniques or used traditional te techniques to hide them. I would show you ways in which Hamatos hides in plain sight using almost nothing traditional in its approach. It works in a fashion which leaves no traces or does not raise a lot of flags in a system and you would understand why it's so different from other more popular malwares out there and why this backdoor uh, which it's a hammer toss is a kind of a backdoor because it uh, puts your information it leaks your information out to the red teamers so how does it do that without leaving almost no trace it's also pretty good to evade network defenders and here I mean network defenders by almost any company as it's uh, the, the technique used here is not very specific to the architecture of the network defender working you would understand that almost no network defender would suspect hammer toss on a machine and yes Coming back to the same point, hiding the malware within the normal behavior of a person in the internet. How to make a malware behave like a person using the internet normally. 
Well, I discussed this from offensive point of view, but if you are interested in the defensive point, you should also understand that when you are making your own network defenders, when you are interested to build your own network defenders sometime, you should be inspired from Mahamatos to understand how activity which you might think in your design as normal activity could potentially be dangerous and how you should be on the lookout for such activities and how you could possibly identify them and make network defenders who would in future sometimes if uh, you can detect activities like hammer toss and essentially how antivirus designs or network defenders who work on a rule based approach would not be able to de detect hammer toss on your machine therefore discussing a few needs of artificially intelligent mal malware detection techniques in the future because hammer toss is a malware of the future and this course i would discuss all of it using simple tools or programming techniques you must have all heard about they're not cutting edge code or they're not some codes you will not have come across if you are into uh, development of network web apps or you are into development of any application which uses the internet and here we'll not discuss about how you can hide it using traditional techniques or redirect somehow you will actually be using the services of several websites you use in your daily life and understand how these can potentially be manipulated to work as a backdoor okay so here you see a screenshot i have taken from the fireeye report i that's the report in the description if you want to go through the report and learn about it uh, you could do that and you could also read more reports from FireEye Inc if you want because they produce really good uh, malware reports and malware analysis so coming back to the point yeah so, Hamatos mimics a normal user it uses Twitter github Google Drive something anyone would use to read text download data or upload data if you are into malware uh, ma or if you understand uh, in a sense what malware does it exactly does these three things it needs commands it needs a directive as to what to do it needs to get the command in a manner that is safe and which does not raise flags in the system and it needs to deliver the results of this command back to the red teamer also without raising suspicions in the system in the screenshot attached you can see that hammer toss works in five very discrete steps and these steps are important in almost any malware design it's retrieving the command going to a procedure to retrieve the same uh, decrypting the command uh, most of most commands in malware are encrypted because you really don't want to show them on clear text to any person who is monitoring the network executing the payload and extracting the useful information from the target and delivering it back to the red teamer the person who is sitting at the command center as we discussed hammer toss is a command and control architecture malware well it does all of this using a very very traditional technique called rest apis apis are application programming interfaces it's essentially a piece of code which help you interact with web services 
I would use the word web services because APIs are used in many places to help developers integrate those services within their apps. These services can be location services. These services can be something like uh, social media accounts or anything which probably a developer would like to integrate in his app. So here it uses APIs from Twitter, GitHub, and Google Drive. I'll discuss it in length um, on the in the next slide, but you should understand or get a fair idea as to the trick that Hammertos uses. Uh, it uses APIs in its code to interact with the internet in a way that does not raise flags and using a clever combination of data that's actually out there on the internet like Twitter which nobody would seem to care about using that as commands and making Twitter the virtual command center for Hamatos actually Twitter and GitHub and then using services like Google Drive, Dropbox, which have API access to them to upload the data from a user's machine. Now what part of this could be suspicious? A user visiting Twitter, GitHub, Google Drive? Not if you are in a rule-based malware system. A rule-based malware system of detection is essentially where you use the concept of blacklists and whitelists and you blacklist certain websites or web services as malicious and you whitelist the others as authentic. If you go by this hard and fast rule, you will understand that Hamatos will easily fool your network defender and do its job pretty well without being Okay, so now let's just explore hammer toss in some detail. Now let's take up the first scenario, getting the command from Twitter. Hammer toss uses Twitter as a virtual command center to retrieve what payload it has to execute on the computer on the client side. Now, if you visit one obscure Twitter handle over and over again, it may raise some suspicions. So, Hamatos does a kind of obfuscation at this level. It takes randomly generated, or I should say pseudo-randomly generated Twitter accounts to get the commands both on the red teaming side and in the malware itself there is an algorithm which predicts the twitter account to be used as a command center for that particular day now the red teamer if he has to execute some command on the client side tweets a very specifically crafted tweet on this Twitter account and Hamatos for that day knows which Twitter account to visit and essentially grab the command. Now here Twitter is also directly not used as Twitter does not have a lot of encoding involved. The text is still HTTP, HTTPS and if it's a command uh, which directly gets transferred to hammer toss still there might be a chance for network defenders to catch it so essentially i discuss a, i'll show you a tweet in after, after after a slide or two and when i discuss the command part in some detail you would understand that the tweet is a specifically crafted link to a github page along with some information and keys as to de decrypting the command once it gets it. 
Now after this generation of a random Twitter handle and visiting the same from the link I mentioned in the tweet, it goes to the next part, GitHub. Now GitHub as you might know is an open source version control web service. It's something which is developed by Microsoft and it's used all over the industry for something called version control. Version control is essentially an activity where a developer or a programmer often keeps a virtual copy of his code, can change it online and, and keep a track of the changes he has made to the code and also make it available for people to edit it, to find bugs in it. Now, Hamotas does not care that much about these activities of GitHub, but you would understand now that it's very normal for people in an IT infrastructure to visit GitHub quite often. Almost all industries that uh, use some sort of a product base or a code base for uh, its services has some repositories on GitHub. Essentially repositories are virtual allocations for these kinds of open source code and employees are not suspected to use GitHub for malicious activity. Now, this will also make it quite obvious that Network Defenders whitelist GitHub as a non-malicious web service. When Hamatos visits the GitHub account, it would find an image that's uploaded there and this image is essentially what contains the final command. Hamatos downloads the image and decrypts it. The decrypting information is there in the, uh, in the tweet which it retrieved before. Nothing till this point seems suspicious. Then more or less the job is done. Now the picture can encodes information in a manner we call steganography which is quite a popular thing for hiding text-based information or any kind of uh, information or files within images or other forms of media files like videos and all and I'll add links to the description if you would learn to know about steganography in detail uh, I will also discuss some of it in the later slide and once it decodes or decrypts the command in this case from the image then it can execute the payload using partial that's the only part perhaps which traditional akin traditional malware and then it does not upload the information back to the red teamers directly what it does essentially is take credentials of a google drive account that's there in the decrypted command from the image and then uploads the results of the payload to this Google Drive account. The red teamers retrieve the files from Google Drive, not the implant itself. Again, if you would follow, nothing is suspicious. Google Drive is also something that's often whitelisted by almost any network defender uh, you'd find across the market. So a bit about Twitter APIs and the Twitter developer API to be specific. Uh, as you can read from the slide, uh, and I have discussed APIs in a previous slide. Uh, so APIs by Twitter are quite robust. It helps you to do a lot of uh, 
automation or stuff like uh, visiting specific accounts retrieving most recent tweets you can read about the Twitter API developers API I add links in the description so the Twitter developer API is something you must explore it's 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 available in a plethora of languages it's, it's there in C++ it's there in Python and I have essentially explained what uh, is there in the tweet I'll show you a sample tweet first so this is a sample tweet it's by a random user that's this that's set for that particular day by Hamatos and this contains uh, essentially two parts it contains a URL which uh, is to the github account and a key to decrypt the information which it gets from github that's all it has that's essentially all it has so the twitter developer api enables programmers to get these tweets in a more text-based format or in a format that is understood easily by code uh, you'd get it in form of a string if you want so you would be able to perform operations on it if or you get it, get it in form of an object so an api essentially takes in stuff that you normally see on the internet and converts it into structures which are easily understood by code so as we have seen the twitter developer api is very key to design the first part of the process now coming to the github repository and the image the malware would find there so from the tweet as i have discussed it visits the url in the sec in the next part and here it gets an image a image file which contains encoded commands using steganography now now the job is mostly done for the malware downloads the image decrypts the information and uploads the relevant data back to the cloud server you can read about it also in detail in the FireEye report that's uh, something that Hamatos would do after executing a partial command a partial command is something you would understand in the next course where you will design a malware yourself and execute payloads but uh, understand this that executing a partial command that's also part of this entire process does not also raise questions so long as that information is not taken somewhere which the network defender thinks is wrong or suspicious applications need data of other files on the system all the time it's completely normal for applications to re retrieve file structures or names of files which are present in the system for an example when you save some file in your computer and in the save as button you see a small window pop up and there you see all the files that are there already on your computer so this application in a sense should get some information about your computer already but that's that doesn't classify it as malware so even that is not suspicious to network defenders unless this information directly goes back on the internet and then the network defenders would suspect is that the application doing so would be malicious the github repository is quite innocent looking doesn't contain much of stuff that would raise suspicions and and the last step for the prestige rather it would use dropbox or google Cloud, google drive to send information back
Well, this is uh, what I had to mostly discuss about uh, hammer toss. Obviously, this is a very rough discussion on the topic. You would find it in better detail if you read reports or other stuff out there about hammer toss that's filed by several inte several intelligence agencies. But what is the takeaway? from this course the key takeaway is that whenever you are designing malwares which essentially involve you communicating with the malware think of ways which are innovative think of ways which doesn't do not adhere to the common and traditional approaches of exchanging messages or transferring commands to a web app. That is, try to generate legitimate traffic on the offensive point of view. And most importantly, from the defensive point of view, understand that not all legitimate traffic is legitimate. When you are making defenders, do not blacklist or whitelist websites or services as you would understand that essentially that does not solve the problem at all. Rather, designing this rule based approach, try to analyze the activity of the malware on the system in an intelligent fashion try to trace what it's doing try to understand if something is constantly downloading only images or some some links are vis being visited more frequently than other links or if some link being visited even from legitimate web services do not actually make sense. You would have seen this, I guess, that Hamatos uses pseudo randomly generated command centers on Twitter. It's okay if a person visits some Twitter account like Bob123 or Melissa1992, but how normal is it for a user to visit accounts like? BLOBPK7217293. So make your network defenders intelligent in understanding what traffic it's letting through. Have a more machine learning based approach or a more uh, statistical approach to what is legitimate and what's not and you will understand that hammer toss is a very advanced and some it's, it's a malware of the, that you would not expect to be on your system but you should always be prepared for it so that brings us to the end of the discussion on hammer toss I hope you liked it. Thank you.